Hello, Robert, Dr. Bob Gardner, ETSU math department here. And uh, this is our first uh, almost substantive uh, section of Modern Algebra 1. So there's a little introduction to chapter one of Hungerford's book on uh, groups. Uh, ideally, if we were doing a complete study of groups, we'd give a classification of groups. We'd be able to describe the structure of all finite groups, all infinite groups. That's not going to happen. Uh, if we were to look in a different setting, for example, uh, if we considered vector spaces, the structure of vector spaces is known in its entirety with a few details added in. If we have a vector space of dimension n, say the scalar field is uh, just some field f, then this vector space is isomorphic to fn, the vector space where the vectors are n tuples of scalar field entries. So for example, if f equals r, then an n-dimensional real vector space is isomorphic to rn. If we have an infinite dimensional vector space, then I'm glossing over a few of the technical details on this. Uh, this really lies in the realm more of analysis than, than linear algebra. But if we have an infinite dimensional vector space over the scalar field of the real, say, <clears throat> which has a countable orthonormal basis, some of the details, then this vector space is isomorphic to a uh, space no denoted as, say, little l2. Uh, I refer to these as the fundamental theorem of finite dimensional vector spaces in the first case and the fundamental theorem of infinite dimensional vector spaces in the second case. My terminology, so you won't find this out there just everywhere, uh, but there's an example of a classification result where in particular, at least for finite dimensional vector spaces, totally classified. All I need to know is a scalar field and, and the dimension, and I can tell you what vector space we're talking about with an analogous result in infinite dimensions with a few technical details thrown in. But it seems there's no such parallel result for groups. So giving a straight up classification of all groups, unlikely. Uh, so what we'll settle for is classification of certain kinds of groups uh, in chapter two, theorem 2.2.1 will classify finitely generated abelian groups. Uh, if you've had a couple of undergraduate algebra classes, then you probably dealt with classification of finitely generated abelian groups. They're related intimately to cyclic groups. So we'll get classifications of that category of groups or that kind of groups. Uh, another result in that direction is the classification of finite simple groups. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, the proof of that's beyond the scope of the course, as they say. Uh, this was proved, classification of finite simple groups. Uh, the proof was concluded around 1980. Some details were trickling out until the in, into the mid 80s. Uh, the textbook we're using, Hungerford's Algebra, is copyright 1974. Some of the older printings may not even mention this, this result concerning finite simple groups. But the classification of these groups was given in hundreds of pages, or hundreds of papers and thousands of pages of journal articles. The project stretched from <clears throat> probably the late 1950s to the 1980, mid 1980s. Um, and even saying the project started in the late 50s is probably a, an optimistic perspective. But finite simple groups have been classified. They fall into a number of categories. Uh, it's not the most elegant result. Uh, I do have a handout that I use in the senior level algebra class here at ETSU uh, that gives a little bit of the history and, and gives a statement of the result at least. So when we look at groups, we're not here to uh, classify all groups, not gonna happen. What we're here to do is uh, give definitions of groups, uh, give some classes of groups, some examples of groups and some properties of some of these classes of groups and a few properties of groups in general. Uh, what we'll do in chapter one is really a quick review uh, probably of your senior level algebra class, part one. 
uh, well, we might run across a few topics that weren't in part one. For example, the classification of finitely generated abelian groups. Maybe you didn't quite get that far in part one of senior level algebra, but we'll get that far in this class. So uh, onward to uh, section 1.1, we'll get definition of some groups and some other algebraic structures and start with that. I uh, will see you in section 1.1 shortly. Have a nice day.